Um, our next presenter is Ms. Chanel Reno. Chanel is an environmental officer at NEPA, Jamaica, and her journey started at the University of the West Indies, Mona, where she pursued her passion for, well, marine biology. In addition to her academic, ac academic accomplishments, she is also an advanced scuba diver certified by the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, which shows that beyond academics, she also pursues her passions for the ocean. So please join me in welcoming Ms. Chanel Reno. Good afternoon again. So I'll be presenting on a novel approach to beach erosion monitoring in the Caribbean. The implementation of a video monitoring system in Helsha Beach, Jamaica. Um, so a bit of context. Um, Jamaica was a participant of the Sandy Shorelines project for short. And the main objective of the project was to improve the resilience of coastal communities to climate change. The project was organized into three major phases and six components, and Jamaica benefited from component number four, which was geared towards monitoring beach erosion processes. The project location is located in the south coast of Jamaica. It's a fishing beach called the Half Moon Bay Fishing Beach, or Helsha Beach, as locals call, uh, refer to it as. And Helsha has a very unique history, and it's very important to us socially. It's one of the only beaches that are, that's in close proximity to our capital city of Kingston. It supports a large community in St. Catherine and Hellshaw. And historically, the beach was protected by vegetated sand dunes, a healthy coral reef, and seagrass beds. And relative to present, we had a beach with about 40 meters. So this image doesn't show you what it would have looked like in its prime. This was just an image I was taking in 2010. And this image shows what the beach looks like as of 2020. And one of the main reasons for the degradation of the coral reefs and seagrass beds has been attributed to Hurricane Ivan, which affected the area in 2004. We've also had a lot of other storm activities, major and minor. And the area is also influenced by poor water quality from the Helsha community and also from the Kingston Harbor, which has been documented as having poor water quality. And this in turn has led to further degradation of our coral reef system and our seagrass, which we know is very sensitive to water quality. Um, another issue that has affected the beach is in its prime, the area had a lot of restaurants that were mostly wooden shacks. And as the beach grew in popularity, so did the population. So, so did the population visiting the beach, and so did the fishing community population. So to grow with the demand, the wooden structures turned to concrete structures, and there were more of them along the coastline. And as the area started to erode, we had a lot of the fishermen put in makeshift seawalls to try and save their property. And in some instances, this exacerbated the erosion problems affecting the coastline. Um, so because of the socioeconomic benefit to the community and the need for a beach erosion management technique, um, Helsha Beach was selected as the area to receive the pilot project for the erection of a video monitoring system which was provided through funding from COICA, the Korean government. So video monitoring is a method of 
identifying changes in the coastline via imagery data. In this instance, we're using photos and videos. And this has a, gives you real-time data. And one of the limitations is it doesn't um, calculate volume, but it can calculate beach width and beach area. Um, so in Jamaica, our implementation process can be summarized in four stages. So the installation of the physical tower, which is a 30 meter steel lattice tower, um, that we had to then retrofit that with electricity and internet, and then GSR, GSC Research Corporation, which is a company in South Korea, they visited Jamaica to install the camera and the computer infrastructure. And in our final stage, which is where Jamaica is at now, we have routine monitoring and maintenance. So this is a schematic of what our system looks like. So it comprises of the tower with cameras, which are remotely connected to a hub, which is at our office at the National Environment and Planning Agency. And we also have a secondary pole for the system because based on the shape of our shoreline, there was a shadow that the 30 meter tower couldn't um, capture. So we have seven cameras in total, the secondary pole and the 30 meter steel lattice tower located on Hellshot Beach. Um, the range of the system, how it's configured, we have approximately 200 meters towards the north and the south. This image shows you the a visual span of the cameras that are on the tower. And um, a little bit about the imaging processing. We have our images being captured during the daylight hours and the system allows you to customize when you take your pictures but because the only source is sunlight, it makes the most sense to just restrict it to your daylight hours. Um, after the images are captured, for every half an hour, images are captured for every second for a three minute period, and those are average using pixel clustering, where um, the program analyzes the red, blue, green, color characteristics and averages and overlaps each pixel to create one image. Um, those images then go through a orthometric correction which removes the angle because the tower takes pictures at an angle as you're seeing here. And so the orthometric correction creates a planar image that we can now upload into AutoCAD and we detect the shoreline manually using AutoCAD. So for Hellshaw, based on the remaining beach that we have, we established three beach shells that we are monitoring. You can see here with the orange lines representing the boundaries of each beach cell and our purple lines are our stand or um, recurrent survey point that we go back and measure against our baseline on. So we've only been collecting data since July 2022. It's a new system. And so over the nine month period, we've already been able to pick up on some uh, temporal changes along the coastline. Um, so in beach cell one, we see that relative to baseline, the beach has eroded. And similar, the opposite, at, sorry. Whereas at beach cell two, we have the opposite where relative to baseline, we have observed accretion. <laughs> and at beach cell three, relative to baseline, we have observed some erosion. And that's just with nine months of data. Um, we do also have here a diagram showing all beach cells together. And you can see that they, the general trend is similar in some seasons or in some months rather, too short to have seasonal changes already. And um, the beauty of this program is based on your management strategy, you can change the temporal scale to fit um, the resources that you have. So you can measure changes daily, monthly, or annually. Um, at Nepal, our current program, we already have uh, quarterly monitoring. So right now we're looking into the feasibility if we want to increase data analysis at a shorter scale. 
the shorter the scale, the more man hours into analyzing the data. And we just started analyzing data last month because a part of the project included uh, Nepal participants receiving training in South Korea of how to analyze the data. So we're still working out the kinks of data analysis. Sorry. Um, so some of the benefits that we've experienced so far is that using the video monitoring system, we're able to collect real-time data of beach erosion and it helps identify our beach erosion hotspots and areas that are most vulnerable, allowing us to act fast and to prioritize resources in specific areas of the beach. And it also gives us the opportunity to um, assess the effects of any control measures that we may put in as a short term to emergency intervention. And uh, the because the tower has a, aviation, a navigational beacon on top of it, a lot of the fisher folk have said that they're very grateful for that light because it guides them home. So we're, we're very happy that it has aided as a maritime navigation tool also. Summarizing all the challenges for a two year implementation was, was challenging. Um, as you all know, the pandemic the pandemic affected the tower being set up. It affected getting the stuff cleared from our ports. Uh, it affected the labor that was available to install the tower. It also delayed our partners from Korea visiting Jamaica to install the cameras. And it delayed my training for up to two years for data analysis. And we also had some significant socioeconomic impacts. The beach that the tower is erected on is actually private property. It's owned by the Fisherman Cooperative. And there was a lot of stakeholder engagement that had to take place in order to get permission to have a tower up there. We have to continue to maintain good working relations with this group because we use them to self-police the equipment. To date, we haven't had any incidents of vandalism and we're very grateful for that. And we accredit it to the good working relationship we have with the property owners. And there have been some minor issues with internet disruption and some also small incidents of persons climbing the tower on authorized access that we hope to rectify in the near future. A lot of lessons learned. Um, as you all know, the sustainability of any project is important, especially for a small island developing state such as Jamaica. We've had to overcome the challenge of finding the budget to now take on this, this amazing gift that we've been given from this project. And fortunately, the powers that be are in full support and budgetary allocation has been provided. And I'd also like to highlight the importance of doing appropriate stakeholder engagement. Ensure that everybody that's involved in the site, everybody that's involved in the process, whether it be local people on the ground or your, your agency, your government stakeholders, ensure that everybody is involved. Um, we had an incident where we forgot to contact a government agency and it ended up causing some delays and causing us money in the end. So it's important to make sure you have all your T's crossed when it comes down to stakeholder engagement. Um, a small challenge that we've experienced is, as I mentioned, it's a 30 meter structure. So it's as tall as your average cell tower. And initially, everybody was very excited about the project, very excited about climbing the tower. And out of a group of four persons, when everybody reached the top, I'm the only one that's still willing to go up there again. So we've had to revisit long-term maintenance. And what we've done now is we've 
contract to third parties to assist with the long-term maintenance because there is a need to climb the structure at least monthly to check for corrosion, check that the wiring is still intact. And so a lesson we've learned is that don't be afraid to ask for help and outsource where necessary and that there are some equipment needs like harnesses and hard hats that we would need to maintain going forward. And on average for this year, we projected that the maintenance would be around 12,000 US dollars. Um, so if anybody's thinking about implementing such a system in your country, I hope that my little summary has given you some insight about what to expect. And thank you for your attention. Preguntas? Uh, yes, the system can withstand possible storm events. So there was a process of doing geotechnical assessments to ensure that the subject can support the weight of the tower and our partners in Korea have assured us that once constructed correctly, it can withstand the severe hurricanes. Um, I won't give you a, a specific rating, but it can withstand storm events. Yeah, I'm sorry that my presentation didn't um, include a picture of this, but in front of the tower, we do have signs explaining what the cameras are doing and our funding agencies and our partners. And uh, this, was, this is necessary because Jamaicans are a very suspicious set of people. They see a tall structure with cameras and their first thing is that we're spying on them. So. That was a part of our stakeholder engagement. We needed to assure them that these are not um, CCTV for checking in on burglary. Um, we're looking at the coastline. Um, so there is a sign located at the bottom of a tower and everybody that's on the beach is very aware of what we're doing. So the structure comes pre-coated with a anti-corrosion coating and um, to bolster that, we, well not necessarily, so it comes with a coating and the corrosion that we've experienced thus far, and it's been nine months, it's extremely minor, um, but we will be painting the tower to come into compliance with aviation requirements. So that will also add to the anti-corrosion mechanism. All right, thank you guys.